Hi, this is Bruce Freed again. This is with one of many videos that you'll be receiving this semester. I would like to tell you at this time that in no way should you let any video uh, become the only thing that you work with in this chapter. Videos are there to assist you in calculations, in definitions, but in no way should you consider any of the videos a total lecture on the chapter. You should still use the course, other course materials. You should use your text. You should use your PowerPoint. You should use the written analysis. Uh, and for some of you, you may even want to use the audio analysis. Today, what I would like to start on for chapter one is the basic accounting equation that I have up on the board. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. It is this equation here that will follow you throughout your accounting career. When we do transaction analysis in this chapter, it's important to understand what items you are affecting in this equation. So before we go any further, it's important for us to understand what an asset is, what a liability is, and what owner's equity is. So let's do that right now. Now the first asset we should know is cash. And when we talk about assets, we're talking about the resources of a company. Assets are resources. Assets are things the company owns that makes the company worth more. And of course, the more cash that a company has, the more their assets are. The second asset that we need to be familiar with in the course are called accounts receivable. Now this is a new term for some of you, but it is an asset. It's the rights to cash from your customers. When your customers come in and do business, they may pay you cash or they may say, put it on my account. You have a customer, you are, you are a paint company and you have a customer who comes in and buys paint from you every week. At first, you probably will put him or her on COD, which means cash on delivery. But after they've done business with you for a while, they, you, you realize that they're, they're good for the cash. And so you say, look, I'll tell you what, you come in and you make your purchases. And at the end of every month, we'll just send you a bill and you pay us. The dollars that they owe you are called accounts receivable. So when we record a sale, as we'll see in this chapter, we may record it through the collection of cash, or we may record it through recording accounts receivable. Another current asset we have is inventory. And for a merchandising company, as we'll see in a later chapter, inventory can be the largest dollar amount that a, that a company has on their balance sheet. Because if we have a company like Walmart, of course, they need to have a tremendous amount of inventory on their shelf because if they don't have it there when you walk in, you'll probably go to one of their competitors and not wait for it to come in on theirs. So inventory is another asset. The more inventory we have, the more the company is worth. Another asset that we have, which we'll get into in a later chapter, are called prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses are basically expenses that we pay ahead of time. We may prepay our rent. We may pay it two or three months ahead of time. And the dollar amounts that don't pertain to our current month we're in are for future periods. And therefore, those dollar amounts are considered assets because we get to use them in the future. Another inventory, I mean, another asset that we have, the more we have, of course, the more the company is worth, are called plant, property, and equipment. And we usually list them as numerous things. We could list them as buildings. And of course, the more buildings we have, the more the value of the company. We could have equipment. And of course, the more equipment we have, the more value, the more the worth of the company. We could have vehicles. And the more vehicles we have, the more value to the company. And another item that we would have that is considered asset is land. Of course, the more land we have, the more value of the company. So all the items that I have up here on the board are assets. The more of them we have, the more the company is worth. 
And as we deal with transaction analysis, if we buy a piece of equipment, we're affecting an asset called equipment. If we're buying a vehicle, of course, that would be the asset vehicle. If we purchase inventory for resale, we're we are recording more inventory. So again, it's important to understand that all of these are assets that make the, that make the company worth more. So that is an asset. Now let's move to the second item on the board, which is liabilities. Liabilities, in the most simple way to say it, is, is money you owe others. That's all a liability really is. And we'll deal with three terms for liabilities in this chapter. The first one, which we'll have to learn and deal with, is accounts payable. Accounts payable would be the opposite of that fellow with the accounts receivable. That painter comes in every week to you and makes purchases. At the end of the month, when you send him his billing, he owes you that money. That's an a payable. That's a payable, and we call that an accounts payable. So again, whenever we purchase anything on account, we're saying put it on our tab, put it on our account, and that is an accounts payable. The second type of liability that we will deal with in this chapter is a note payable. A note payable is very similar to an accounts payable because we're purchasing something and we do owe the money on it. The difference between a note and an account payable is, is that a note is a formal written document that requires the, the uh, purchaser to pay back X amount of dollars, usually on a monthly basis. And part of that is principal and part of that is, of course, interest. And that's the big difference between an accounts payable and a note payable. So if we purchase some equipment and we're going to purchase it over a period of time, generally we purchase that equipment on a note payable. Therefore, we purchase that equipment, which is an asset, but we also incurred a liability, which is a note payable. And the last time type of payable that we'll deal with in this chapter, which is also has the word payable and it would be a mortgage payable. Mortgage payable will, will be the third type of liability. And if you notice, the one thing that all three have in common is, is that they're all payables. And of course, payables are money that we owe others. So first we have all of our assets. Those are all the resources of the company, all the things that make the company worth more. Then we have all the money we owe others. And then we have what is called our owner's equity. Now our owner's equity is really the, the uh, residual. That's what the textbook uses. And residual means leftovers. And basically what we're saying therefore is if we took all our assets, what are they worth? We subtracted out from them all of our liabilities, then we would have everything left over and that's our owner's equity. That's what we own in it. A typical way to <coughs> show, to gain an understanding of this equation is if we relate it to a home that, that you may owe. Of course, you say, when you talk about the equity in a home, what you're saying is, is how much is my home worth? Your home is a house, of course, a building. That's your asset. Let's say your home is worth $390,000, and that your liability would be your mortgage payable. And of course, that is a liability. And let's say that, that mortgage payable is 210, then basically when you talk about equity in that house, you're saying my assets, my, the difference between my assets minus my liabilities, which is what, 180, that would be my owner's equity. And that's what we're really talking about in this equation. Assets equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity. Another good way to say it is, is assets minus the liabilities will equal my owner's equity. So that's the general accounting equation. It's important, again, to understand what goes under each one. Now, there are two other terms that we do need to learn for today, and they both affect owner's equity, or, and they make owner's equity go up, 
and they may make owner's equity go down, and we need to understand those four. Actually, there's four items. So let's go through those right now. They're also right in your textbook. And the items that make owner's equity go up, first of all, would be contributions from the owner. When the owner starts a business, if they put in contributions, that's cash. That, more cash again, makes the company worth more, and therefore, owner's equity would go up. So every time an owner puts money in, that makes the, makes the company worth more. The other item that makes owner's equity go up are revenues. Of course, the more income that a company has, the more that it earns, the more value, the more worth to that company. And therefore, revenue will make owner's equity go up, and that will affect the owner's equity account. So we have two items that will make owner's equity go up. Contributions, money being put in by the owner, and revenue, that's the money being earned by the company. There are two items that also make it go down, and they're really the opposite. The first one would be withdrawals or drawings by the owner. When the owner takes money, instead of putting money in, the owner, money, the owner is taking money out for his, person, his or her personal use, and therefore it is that he, he or she is decreasing owner's equity. And the last item that would make owner's equity go down, of course, would be the opposite of revenue, and that would be expenses. Because in the end, when a company incurs expenses, they have a cash flow out, and therefore it is going to decrease the value of the company. So once again, it is important to understand the basic accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, and to make sure that you understand what an asset is, a liability is, and the four items that affect owner's equity, two of them making owner's equity go up, and two of, uh, of them making owner's equity go down. That's all I have for you today. I look forward to seeing you again. So long for now.